Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. Very excited to have Jessica St. Michelle of All That Is joining us for her second episode. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Woo. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. We're so good to see you again, yeah. co-creator. Co-creator, yes. <laughs> yes, there's been lots more co-creating that we'll be unpacking this episode. For those that don't know, Jessica St. Michelle's shamanic guide, mystic, and channeler. And you can find her links in the bio below. All right, so since October of 2018, you came out as a mystic and a channeler. Yes, on this show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, all right, here we go. And then I rushed to make sure I called my family the next day so that they weren't going to be, you know, totally blindsided. Still blindsided, but. Still blindsided, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting, so you came out on the show and then you shared it with your friends and then what was the receptivity from that and from family too? You know, it's actually been really cool. I, I got to spend uh, eight, nine months in LA, which was fantastic and amazing and the most challenging time of my life for sure. In so many ways I expanded and I really appreciate some key people like you and um, really dear friends that, that supported the, my gift, that saw the value of it and then kind of helped give me some steps to you know elevate that a little bit more to, to share with other people and, and what's been so dear and incredible is that many of these people they challenge for even nine months later they still talk about it you know they still mention it they still say how much it, it helped them to deliver these messages that came in and so um, so that's just been such an incredible experience and, and I certainly want to help to maybe um, demystify a little bit what channeling is because I don't think people need to go back and watch that that first episode I can kind of distill it down yeah, for let's, the audience. yeah let's do that okay so if you think about um, going onto the TV and you're scrolling through all these channels and you're like you know I feel like watching the History Channel and okay what's on the History Channel oh something about ancient Egypt okay cool um, I'm like the the TV like you can scroll through and find what kind of channel what where do you want to go to get a deeper insight clarity or guidance or a message about something that's happening in your life and so um, I'm I'm like the broadcast system like I pull down that that information and then I become the speaker so then I share it uh, that's kind of the simplest way I think to say it but we're all channels like we all are connected to divine source all of us mm -hmm. and it just shows up in different ways but if you think about anyone that goes into a peak state or flow state yeah uh artists athletes all that they're channeling they're channeling mm -hmm. the energy through them and what they do so for me how i channel among other things is delivering messages yeah you give the really relatable examples that we're all channels that we uh, we all are connected to source and for us to be able to take those moments of of infinite expansiveness to connect to that source even through something as simple as our breath that that is a that that state to be constantly tapping into is so empowering and so important and it can be done like you said we just had athena kim on the show and she was talking about how she's a channel for all of her art that she mm -hmm. makes painting mm -hmm. on massive canvases and these types of of relatable examples of how for you 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 said maybe not all of us are like can connect to all the channels though right yeah so so how but then how do you end up helping uh open up the channel for someone that is asking for something specific because sometimes you've done like abraham lincoln mm -hmm. But yeah. then you do like all different types of things, ancient, mm -hmm. other ancient wisdom, mm -hmm. all future stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does yeah. that work? How does it work? Uh, so what I do is I, I consider myself a spiritual athlete. So I'm doing what I can to raise my vibration and my frequency and doing my own self exploration uh, to, to work on my vibration to be able to access those higher points of frequency. So if you have a specific question that you have that you would like to get some clarity on, I love working with people that are like, I don't know why this thing happened in my life or this thing has been keeping me up or I don't know where to go next with this. And, um, and another thing they think about is if they had such an open-ended question, it's like walking up to the biggest library you've ever seen in your life and I'm here to take you to where you wanna go. Mm. So if you're like, you know, I'm interested in love and relationships, it's like, okay, so I'll take you to this section 
of love and relationships. And you'll have, and but the more drilled down you get into the specific of what you want, the more specific I can provide a guided message for, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what I do is I say, okay, who here uh, has a message that's in the highest good, highest purpose, highest love, and highest service for you? Because I care so much about that level of integrity and what comes through. And I love the messages. So I'm still present to you. So when the message comes through, it's just like I shift a little bit. But it's surrendering. And it's the most joyful state that I can be in. Like I'm smiling right now just thinking about it. Because mm-hmm. when I get into the channeling state and I'm, sur- I'm surrendering to um, you know, this message that comes through while still being conscious as well. Um, and so mm-hmm. then that's... Mm-hmm. So it could be Abraham Lincoln, it could be Lakshmi, it could be um, angels, it could be Gaia, it could be you know mm-hmm. the Pleiadians, it could be everything and anything, your higher self, people that have passed on, like everything is consciousness. Everything is consciousness. So to tap into your higher self can be just as wise as the Buddha because they're all connected to that divine source of energy and, and uh, truth. Yeah, the library analogy is really good. Take me to the love and relationship section. And then how do you then open up the the channel for whatever and surrender to whatever's coming through from the love and relationship section of all that is through you mm-hmm. and then um, to the other? How does that process of surrendering work? Just to trust in what's coming through? Yeah, so like when my body moves like that, that's like the energy moving through. Like the right, so usually when I'm channeling for someone, I'm like, okay, if you notice my body moving like this, it's because energy's starting to come through. Um, so that's one way of how I know that there's a message that wants to come through, uh, that that's ready to be shared, and that's one way. I also use a pendulum, a divination tool, so that um, you know, it's like I'm kind of like it's kind of like if like crackly, like oh, I, I'm hearing this name or this name or this name, and then I use my pendulum, and then once I like confirm it's that, it's like I like plug in and then then it comes mm-hmm. through um yeah that's almost, how my understanding of it is right now mm-hmm. almost as though maybe like for others that that want this to be relatable maybe it's something like when you ask me a question uh like we ask like what's the most beautiful thing in the world if you ask me that like sometimes people will like look through like take a moment instead of react right away and they'll kind of like They'll like look or feel through mm-hmm. themselves and through what they know and they'll be like, ah, and then pull it down. And that's yeah. the one that gets channeled through them, something like that. Something like that, yeah. And I, you know what, this image just came to me. Do you remember those really old uh, telephone switchboard operators that kind of plugged in? You know, they, they call, you know, you're oh, dialing saying, sure. hey, I want to connect to so-and-so. They're like, okay, hold please. And they like, will pull out the plug and then they plug it into the next thing. Like, you know, I think it'll Yeah, Ron used to operate those. Sure. <laughs> wow, he's... Yeah. In an old antique museum. Um, <laughs> the, but, you know, in the same way, it's like, okay, you want to connect to blah, blah, blah? Okay, cool. You know, and it's like plugging into it and then, and then being the, the speaker. Um, yeah. And it's, it's really interesting because I, I also notice that there's times where I have my inner conflict because I hear the messages coming through and I'm like, oh, I don't want to say that because I care about how the other person's oh, going to respond. Sure. So then oh, okay. there's my own, like, inner workings of stepping, really stepping aside because a channel, just like the TV station, the TV channel isn't discriminating like, oh, this is a horrible thing that it's, I'm oh. saying right now, or oh, this is the most incredible thing, you know? Like, it's just delivering information. But you are discriminating a little bit. I, I was, you, you know, and I'm, I'm working, that's my humanity. humanity this is, yeah, this is yeah. an object that has no humanity. It's, yeah. You know, it's just delivering information. So for me to like have the hum- human in me that's like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to say this because a lot of it too is my own translation. You know, it, it's not like I'm, I mean, I kind of like hear the words like here, like as it's coming through, but up here it's just energy and then it's like translating through. So there's, there's a lot of components to it, but like yeah. having the, being committed to being a messenger then for a lot of channels, yeah. that means being able to step out of the judgment of what's right or wrong, good or bad, yes or no, and just saying it for what it is, and then trusting that your soul wanted you yeah. to hear the message that I'm delivering, yeah. and then I, and then for me to let, and then let go of that, you know. So if you were to walk away and be like, "Well, shit, that's not what I wanted to hear," I can't take that on. Like, yeah, yeah. I have to trust that that's, you know. Otherwise, we're not doing our jobs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So normally it's because there's some sort of a, a growth that is ha- happening between uh, uh, two nerve endings of all that is, like you and someone else, and that there's a channel that's being opened for you to uh, communicate something of like growth to, to the other yeah ending, something like that and there's another thing too i was actually we were um <laughs> playing with like this little electrical device the other day and and this the man had the had the grounding piece the copper and he took my hand and i felt the current from his hand to mine from this electrical device well then i held someone else's hand and then i felt the energy current in my hands going to the next mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. you know so in a way like i'm the electrical current that's running from source to you Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so. and we can tap into that ourselves, but you have yes. to become a spiritual athlete to, well, yeah, to get better at it. it yeah, I it mean, it's time. just it's development. Like an it's artist doesn't become an artist. Basketball players will start shooting three pointers immediately. You know, yeah. all of it, all yeah. of it is development. But but each yeah. each one at that level, and, and I'm not saying I'm at, I'm there yet. I've been shy for over ten You're years. You're training for the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you know, and it's a it's a flow state, and and those athletes really understand the end game, and then they're going to do whatever they can when they've reached a level of um, uh, accuracy and performance. Well, what's the next level? How can I go to the next peak? So yeah. they're they're always finding ways to pull it in, and that's what I'm doing in my own life as as a mystic and as a channeler and a healer and a coach and you know all these things that I'm, I'm pulling together because I want to offer the most incredible experience that I can for every person trusting in that the divine is working through me and then I'm pulling all the tools I have here in this human life um, to, to really help everybody elevate to be their full potential it's a huge I mean it's a it's a I guess that's a calling yeah for me. And so it's been like kind of dozens of these uh, channels, if not even like a hundred or so. Oh, uh, yeah, I've channeled over, yeah, yeah, way over a hundred, and it's it's amazing the insights. Like I, I one of my favorites is um, <laughs> uh, I channeled some a friend of mine's higher self who is sex god, and um, and for him to say like, you know have fun with life like life is an orgasm yeah, like yeah. just have fun and play and feel it and what's so cool why i love what i do so much is that as he's coming through me i can feel that energy so then i'm like oh yeah okay like i can feel like what it is to like feel like life is like on the verge of an orgasm yeah, like that yeah. but it's beautiful and that's how life's been created and and i've just i've and so i've been on my own personal journey so like coming back to that space again of like the life is meant to be joyful, and, and there are tough times, and there are darkness and dark points, but that's part of the journey, the hero's journey. Yeah, and then the life being an orgasm, this can lead us into, um, well, let's, let's stick to, I just want to hit that point, and then we can revisit it, just that um, if it is for every single one of us a constant um, orgasm, we just got to make sure that there's still a playground for the grandkids. So we have to also work on solving some of the pressing challenges that our planet faces. So it's like a delicate <clears throat> yeah, balance between those. And the, the, the orgasm is life force. Is life force. So yeah, yeah. it's not about I'm shirking all my duties and responsibilities to go yes. have tons of sex. That's not yeah. what it's about. It's yeah. about coming from an enlivened state and being from that state of joy and bliss yes. creating yes. like where does like because that joy state is you connecting to source so from that state how can i you know solve these problems that's a big part of tantra is like taking in the energy and circulating it and enlivening yourself and raising raising your your bliss state and then creating from that space because if you're trying to create from a state of and i've been doing this like trying to create from a state of anxiety of overwhelm of doubt of uncertainty you get nowhere you get nowhere but to me it's like if you're coming from a place of joy and and bliss and aliveness and sexiness like it's just like things become so much more vivid and colorful yeah. and, and possible yeah and then so this has been hero's journey yes for you yeah heroine's journey yeah two years yeah. at least i'm sure we we go through it multiple yeah, yeah, times sure. again and again but mm-hmm. yeah it really started um for sure the last year i've been on a deep hero's journey because you know what i kind of discovered yesterday is nothing explored nothing discovered yeah and 
and I can hypothesize all I want about life and what, what could be and, and, and look at these, you know, being led to these places. I'm like, oh no, this is really scary. I do not want to go there. Um, but that's my mind, you know, and yet my body is, is guiding me to a place. And then finally when I'm like, okay, I'm going to go check out and see what this is. Like being willing to go through that, that, that darkness and now to be on the other side of it and being like, wow, I really can lead people through hero's journeys. Yeah. You know, being willing to um, surrender to a plan greater than I can see, trusting that the divine source knows what my desires are and what I'm most afraid of and doesn't want to harm me, you know, that wants to help me get to the state of living my divine self on this earth because the divine seeks to experience itself through everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then what is the the darker night of the soul? What is that? Um, so I have my version, but uh, I feel like there's a message that would like to come through about the dark night of the soul. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, okay. So this is my divine self coming through. Uh, okay. Divine self. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Jessica likes to take things so seriously and we love that about her uh, the dark night of the soul th this is a, a concept that has actually had a, a tremendous amount of um, judgment toward um, this feeling of, of uh, being lost of, of confusion of doubt of uncertainty and of things being upended in life when everything seemed to be going one way and then phew, on a dime it seems like things things shift and then it's not you can't get back up again and it's not going back on that path again and mm -hmm. and things aren't working the way that they, they used to and there's this like it, it it drops each person into this state of like for jessica she was literally on her knees i i came to a day where i was like if if this is my last day i'm okay like that like and i'm feeling emotional to get to that level of um so uh, feeling so un unworthy and then like I, I haven't contributed enough on this planet and what am I even here to do and why does it even matter it's like all of these like yeah, dark yeah, yeah. things dark that like ones, yeah, I yeah. have not acknowledged thought yeah. about you know like I mean they've kind of been here but to like to like really come and face that and then thank God like you know, they, there were like angels that came in to like kind of be like, no, 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 no. Like, let's get you back up on your feet. Like, you know, okay, like, let, okay, nine on one. You know, like we gotta, we gotta help. Not in a, you know, mortal way, but like in a, in a divine way. Like, let's send in the troops to like help her remember again. Because, and every single one of us go through that, where we are brought to our knees and being like, why am I here? What is the point like why am i doing all of this for what uh, yeah. and like um, the puzzle piece that your unique fit is in civilization is yeah. like unworthy or not divine or doesn't have its place and it's, it's yeah. like rotting and so you need to call in the troops to help that puzzle piece awaken towards yeah. its divinity and its fit in the civilizational scheme over time yeah and i think there's something about doing shadow work which you know we you know there's a lot of things about shadow work and there's a lot of um beautiful things about seeing like these basically these parts of ourselves that we've ignored or that we find that we deny or that we push away and I've spent many months doing that and it also really got to a point where I just kept spiraling and spiraling and spiraling as I'm going deeper and deeper into this abyss of like these dark places in myself that I hadn't been willing to look at um, and to really reach that point where I'm like you know what today's my last day universe I get it Someone else will finish my mission. If I'm if I'm meant to live another day, then then I'll wake up. Not in a way. That, and and I think too that there's times where it's like you kind of like say something like that, but you're like, but I don't really mean it. I just want to yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. I meant it. So again, to go to that place, um, you know, to to finally be moving out of the other side of that, and thank God, so much faster. Um, I can understand like I can understand what brings people to their knees where they feel so desperate and so hopeless and I was like and I've had I mean I, have, I feel like I have a lot to offer I feel like I've achieved a great deal in my life and still to get to that point after all that I've accomplished and I can be on my knees beyond anything that I've ever experienced and um, so it's been a really 
hugely big hero's journey and, and to keep moving forward and keep moving forward. And the only thing that I can say that I, I really wish is that I, I didn't reach out to people. I didn't reach out to you. I didn't, I, I felt like I need to do this on my own. And the thing is, is that with the collective awakening mm. as it is, and there's certain people that are being called to wake up before the masses, because if everyone were to wake up at the same time, it would be pandemonium, utter chaos. Um, and that's from Phil Good. He's an amazing channeler in LA. Mm -hmm. I have so much respect for him and his teachings are incredible. I've really, really um, leaned into him quite a bit. Um, so for some of us that are, are waking up and we're going through, we're doing all the shit work, you know, we're doing all of it. All of us are being brought to our knees and we have to get back up and then be able to share and help everybody else when they start, Not you know, it like kind of happens in, mm -hmm. in ways. That's my understanding right now. So it's like the early adopters on the end of the bell curve of understanding source and spirituality, these types of things, the divine purpose that we all have on the planet. And then going through the process of understanding that pretty much nobody else is getting it right now and that there's a lot of updates in civilization, social fabric that have to happen. So it's kind of like taking the burden on the back, updating the world we live in, working with the other ones that are understand source and spirit, and then slowly over time, just helping identify other people that are like kind of there that get it a little bit, mm -hmm. start getting it more and more. And then the big waves come in the center of the bell curve, those larger waves of awakening come over time. And it'll be really reflective in the in the in our news feeds, in our in our entertainment, in our content, movie content, things like this. Um, that the content isn't just derp 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 waste of time, but it's going to be stuff that's like you are a divine being that has a unique role in this planet that is connected to all of nature. Things like that that are just like whoa, like and that's going to become like a norm. Like everything will have some like permutation of that in it things like that I mean, that's a very beautiful and exciting future that <laughs> it, it is and it's also terrifying because so much of it is in the unknown and then thank god for the pioneers that came, that came before us and you yes. know we've called yes. in being galactic beings there is no there is no other place to be in this galaxy than on earth truly like this is the place to be again crediting feel good and so this is like <laughs> the grand this is like the grand dance happening right now. The biggest dance. This is like the best playground of, of the galaxy. Yeah, well, and we can clear up so much karmic things because here is duality. Yes. The rest of the universe really doesn't have that kind of experience. But here is duality, free choice, free will. And oh, by the way, you forget that you're a divine being. Yeah. So you're moving through things. You're clearing out karmic agreements and, and you know, all these. I mean, there's so much to be done here that that so many souls come racing here to experience that because the opportunity that they can they can jump kind of like up level, up level. it's like you know they they have like a fast track in a way to up level in a different way so um, and the things that we gain as experience are like being able to handle the free choice, the free will, the duality, the forgetting that we're a divine being. So like so like remembering those things as we're birthed here levels us up. And so that's kind of yeah. part of the, like why there's a big rush because there's so many cool like accolades to get. Well, and, and the earth is in a real volatile place. Like there, like it has to work. If our earth does not make it, it will affect the entire, entire universe, which a lot of us don't think about. So there, that's another reason why you've got future galactic being like so many benevolent beings from other planets that are incarnating here because they're like dude we gotta like we we gotta shift this we gotta move this up um interesting so benevolent beings from other areas of the universe are incarnating on the planet to help the spiral of awakening yeah i mean there's forces for for all you know for all that is there's forces of everything but again like to be in this space of free will and free choice and um, you know, and, it, and then it's cool to like, you know, you, you start seeing people like as you're kind of like wake up a little bit more and you start seeing people like, oh, I know you. Oh, yeah. You, I, we've we've mm -hmm, done mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. before. Like, yeah. oh, we're, we're here. We had yeah. this thing. Like, okay, it's definitely cool. what it's felt like. Yeah. Year, like you and I. Yeah. And Ron, yeah. yeah. Ron is yeah. amazing. We love you, Ron. That's definitely what it's felt like. Yeah. He's been quiet. I love <laughs> Chinese food. <laughs> Chicken and mushrooms. Oh. 34 at Toulon. <laughs> um, you know it. 
but you know so again like I just for any and and also too like our earth is being bombarded with solar flares and there's just so much energy because it's the the earth is moving from 3d to 5d and we need our earthly our human body what is that also. part yeah what does that part mean it's just like a higher dimension where the the, the density of this earth and, and working in duality you know it, mm. it ups it to much more of a unification um existence and you know it's really profound and beautiful um uh, I can go look and feel good for more of that. I don't know why I keep plugging him, but I, I just, it's like he's been a really good teacher for me, so I certainly don't want to say it's mine. Yeah, we plug, exactly. We plug the good teachers. We stand on their shoulders. Also, feel good. Get your ass on the show. Let's make that shit happen. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll invite you. Um, oh, so, so the, so we're the up leveling of consciousness, the awakening that that happens, up levels society to mm -hmm. from 3D to 4D to 5D, where yeah, it's definitely. almost as though like we're all walking around as like we're connected to source on like a moment to moment basis. Yes, and so that's one of the things too is to be in the moment, um, be in the present moment. Uh, Phil Good talks about this. He says, "Be a dot." So like like really not planning anything, being so in the moment that's that badass, that's, yeah. that's all that is because that is all that is and that's yeah. one of the things that I have really learned in my own journey the last couple of days and and having experiences and uh, sessions with friends and clients that like it doesn't matter everything leading up doesn't matter and everything to come doesn't matter because all it's only one moment it's only this, this so thing. all all that is mm -hmm. is also all that is mm -hmm. like in this present moment mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so when our minds wander and they're trying to process, it's like, oh, I need to understand. And it's important because it helped us get to this level of, of existence that you yeah. know, we're here so much. But um, by really tapping into our bodies, our intuition, and, and channeling into that, that soul, that source um, is really incredible. So for me, so, but to get Question. back to the, huh? yes. Have we gotten here before in the last like, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of millions of years, have we gotten to this point of getting from 3D to 5D and then civilization collapses? Yeah, I mean, if you look at Lemuria, Atlantis, the Atlanteans, like there were higher, higher sources, higher beings that were less dense, they were more frequency based that were here on this earth, yeah, a long time ago. And they're still here. Some of them still are. And what so. do you? Oh, some of them are still here. Okay. Yeah, they say if like you, if your vi I've been told if your if your frequency is high enough, then you can see them. Just like some people can see angels. You know, that's a very high frequency, and some people can see them. Some people can see them. Interesting. So there's like gatekeepers in science that like prevent spiritual wisdom from like because it's like, can I prove it with the scientific method? We're empirical here, and then it's like. But if well, you look at the Ascension Papers by saying that, like, we don't know anything. There's no absolute truth of anything on this. The scientists cannot prove anything beyond reasonable doubt. It, it's not possible because we have the veil of unknowing that's been placed on this earth. It's been thinning, but, but they cannot prove anything to the absolute degree of certainty. So none of it is... It's all 99.9. Even that, but then it still comes down to your truth. So who am I to tell you that how you feel about this certain subject is right or wrong? Because that is your truth and in this moment. So if Yeah, I, but we can say like the molecular composition of water is a certain way and the gravitational break it down even more and break it down even more and break it down even more. And there, there's well, what are the, subatomic there's particles, never a point. What a string theory. It's just not it's not there. That's from and I I mean, that's kind of what I've read. So but people can believe what they want, and that's okay. That's the whole point of Then you get to the source journey. code, and yeah. maybe the source code can't be tapped into in the 3D world, but it can be maybe in the higher mm -hmm. dimensions. Um, let's also let's also. But um, I do yeah, want to ahead. say about the, close that off. Yeah. Okay. the hero's dream. I just I want to say for the people that are in the dark night of the soul, and that I mean I'm talking about like um, fatigue. They can't get out of bed. Uh, super depressed. They f have no desire to live like the way that, you know, life is right now. Um, or they're feeling so, so overwhelmed or just crushing, um, debilitating anxiety, like all that. Th these are all, um, especially if it's kind of coming out of nowhere, these are part of like the symptoms of the big energies that are coming into our planet. We're trying, our bodies are trying to like get it out. So we're feeling all these things are coming up. So it's all part of the process just to say, 
you know, connect with people that you love, that make you feel good, you know, the people that, like, remind you of your greatness and, um, and do the things that bring you joy. And I've, like, I so wish I had really, really done that because I, I didn't. And it just stopped, took me a lot, lot deeper. Yeah, yeah. And it finally brought me to my knees. And then thank God for literally human angels that came in and, like, Mm. you know pick yeah. me up so yeah. over the course of a month my life like. is like completely yeah. changed and I'm so grateful for it um, but these are the times where we it. have to help pick yeah. each other up yeah. we have to and 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 I have so much more humility now like I've, I've, I feel like I've been very very humbled and that and also not having the judgments that I used to like six months ago five months ago yeah, four yeah, months ago they're yeah. like gone and yeah. that's another part I think too of the clearing it's like you want to be a leader you want to be an ascended master on this planet you want to do the things you're here to do well like let's slough off this stuff that makes you think that yeah. you're super super awesome because yes, guess yes. what everyone's awesome mm -hmm. we're all here for a purpose and you have no reason to thumb your nose at anybody else that's right when you should be helping everybody that comes across your path and yeah and a distinction of that is if people ask you for help, help. But for you to jump in and be like, oh, they need help, they need rescuing, mm -hmm. not your job. Mm. You're not your job. Ah. Because you're not here to save anybody. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. if you were to look at them and be like, oh my gosh, they really need some help, I should like jump in yeah, there. Yeah. That's, you that's you denying the divinity in them that they can't connect to their God source and yeah, get what yeah. they need and, and pull it in or ask for it by us assuming that we know what's better for them. It's not part of our plan. That's not part of our, our yeah. path. That's their journey and to honor it and to be supportive and, and there. It's, I mean, it's a- Balance. It's, that's love. Like, I mean, yeah. that's hard for me to say, but like, cause there were so many times while I was in this state, I'm like, please someone save me. Please someone save me. Please someone save me. Please someone, someone, anybody, please save me. I need help. Um, and it was like, it, I wasn't going to get the help in the way that I thought I needed, but I got exactly what okay, I needed. Okay, someone's house is on fire, we help. They don't right. like ask for help. Yeah, like, I mean, we that's go mortal danger. That's yeah. mortal danger, but. Or, or like even metaphorically, their house is on fire. Like they're yeah. like not cleaning their room. They're like, they don't know what their North Star is. They're not figuring it out. They're asking for help, kind of like what you were doing. And if we're like not, yeah, so anyway, so there's But it's a asking better questions rather than telling them this is what you need to do. Asking them the question, you're an interlocutor. You ask people the questions to define, to, to divine their own truth. Okay. So you can offer the support. What, how can I support you right now? What is it that you need? Let them tell you what it is that they need. But for you to say, oh, it looks like you need a da 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 Yeah, ask the questions to get what they what? need. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of the best questions that um, one of my dearest friends asked is like, what is the most supportive thing I can do for you right now? And when someone says, I don't know, then what? Then you say, okay, well, let's check in with your body. What is it? Like, if you were just to ask your body, what is it that I need right now? What okay. do I need? What and, would help me and, feel good? And then hopefully they know how to do that. But then again, if they're like, I don't know how to do that. Like, okay. I don't know what I need. Um, I, well, see, this is what I'm doing. I'm placing my hands on my body, on one of my chest and one of my solar plexus. And I'm saying like, okay, what do I need right now? And just take a breath, knowing that there is no wrong answer and that allowing my body to say whatever it is. I need a snack. I need food. I need a snack right now. I'm hungry. Like that's what my body's saying, you know? It can be as simple as that. And it doesn't, or, you know, but if we're so freaked out, I, I've gotten to like really places of desperation where I was like willing to like do things I would never have done in my whole life, you know, and, but it's all part of the process. It's all part of the journey. It's just think yeah. again, like if you're willing to go into those dark places, I don't want to say dark. It's not about dark places. You guys, it's just, there's things to get out of us that don't serve us anymore, but they need to come to the surface and we need to move them out. So that can be a lot of things, but it's so absolutely part of the hero's journey. Like, if anyone studies the hero's journey at all, like, it's nearly to a T. Every single one of us goes through a hero's journey. We've also gotten to the point where we pass along some sort of a, a, a guidance 
or like a principal to someone else and then they go, yeah. whoa, that revolutionized my life. I didn't even ask you for it, but it revolutionized my life. So it's kind of like, I'm trying to figure out where we ask questions and just listen and we're with people, old space, all this type of stuff, channel, all this stuff. But also that there's like, sometimes it's not even asked directly, but there can be some something that's brought forth that can then help them achieve what what the what they desire and they didn't even know so yeah i'm 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 falling this is this it's is a complicated thing question, but here's the thing like alan i just got this message from your uh from your father and he's saying that blah 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 blah, blah. and you're like i didn't ask for that okay i did that to one of my best friends i yeah. i literally i was like your father's coming through right now I don't want to hear it. Your father's coming through right now, and he's saying da 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 da, and it it actually caused a, a bit of a rift for a little bit of time. She's like, I didn't ask you for that message. So, and take that out of messenger, just in everyday life. Oh, you need to go do da da da. da. I didn't ask you what I need to do. But then we also say like wait like instead of me being like so defensive about no i didn't ask you for it then there's also me going what did she say what did my dad just say like what did my father say like was there some important signal in there that i'm declining because i'm not seeing the divine moment that potentially just happened or it could be the opposite that you're not seeing the person not needing it right now so i see both of those yeah and i wonder like which one which one which one and so yeah. i it's, think we can yeah that, there's a lot of to still break down let's let's um let's move on i'm i'm there's still a lot more to talk about within heroes journey dark Knight. so those were really good subjects um so we, we mentioned this throughout i want to i want to understand it at a deeper level from what you, alan um, drink this water yeah no this water okay take it okay take this water. yeah yeah so yeah yeah like me Exactly, versus me taking Saying like, it. Say like, Alan, would you like a glass of water? And you're yeah, like, yeah. you know, I got one right here. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Take it. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. That, that's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's an excellent way to um, illustrate the difference. And if, if like literally I'm about to die and I'm not going to drink the water and you're like, fucking drink the water, <laughs> you know, and I do and you save my life. Maybe a year down the line, I'm gonna be like, I'm fucking grateful you saved my life. Yeah. Thank you. And so anyway, the agency, there's but yeah. yeah, there's all, there's nuance. I, I really like that point. That's that's a really cool, um, it's a really good analogy for it. Okay, so let's explore um, where we were at a little bit ago. Um, unpack this deeper. So we, I think our. Um, there's a couple things. First is there's a hundred billion puzzle pieces, humans that have puzzle piece their way into finding out what their role was in civilization and now like the puzzle's gotten fucking a lot bigger the 100 billion now there's 8 billion that are like all trying to figure out what their north star is for their puzzle piece what their role is some puzzle pieces aren't figuring it out as as quickly but the fact that all of these puzzle pieces have been building this planet and there's all of this beauty of free will free choice the duality the remembering that we're doing all these types of things mm -hmm that this playground, that this planet is one of the most, and it's hard because you have to literally take yourself out of your first person perspective, which is really hard to do. First, an exercise in empathy. You can get behind another person's perspective as best as you can. Then you can get yourself out of your body and you can think of like, okay, well, how is like the city doing? How is like San Francisco as a city doing? Well, there's the ocean that feels really good. There's like a massive, concrete jungle area filled with people that have severe trauma sometimes and that doesn't feel as good. Mm -hmm. Then you go out and you feel the whole country, you feel the whole earth, then you go past the earth into what exists beyond the earth and potentially where we came from. And this is all part of source, but I'm trying to get people to take themselves out of just their own head perspective and then get themselves to these more, more like we are on a playground that is a planet that we have to take care of because it's the house that gives us the nutrients we need to survive. Yes. And so that point there should be like, ah, okay, I get it. We have to take care of the house we live in. Aha, okay. The next thing is take yourself to the historical timeline and you see where we came from and where we're going. And then that is this idea of, holy cow, like there's 
a massive awakening that's spiraling upward. And then now we are at a very pinnacle moment of figuring out a transitional moment of, of awakening. And how do we enable the grandkids and their grandkids to have a playground that is full of just absolute awesomeness? And so that, that essence is, I think, like, is so important to wrap the mind around, so important to, to, to understand. This is what nourishes us. This is where we want the playground to look like. And that's potentially what some of our roles are, is to make this whole narrative make sense for the awakening. Mm-hmm. Your question. How do you feel about that? <coughs> I feel that we have been uh, we've been led to believe a complete untruth in that um, what our roles here and the importance of it and um, what we're here to do. I mean, look outside. What, you know, how many people are actually outside? enjoying the earth for what it is, you know? And, and I understand, we've got jobs, da, da, da. Such a conversation. But time and again, if you think about the collective, that we're all connected to each other, do you think that coming from a state of anxiety, stress, and overwhelm is a higher frequency or a lower frequency than operating from a space of bliss and joy? And if we're created in the likeness of God, do you think that, you know, do you think that we that God is overwhelming anxiety. I mean, He is all those things, but you know, but the bliss and the joy. Like, why is sex pleasurable? Why is it even? Why Why do we get to experience the pleasure of it? Why is it pleasurable? Why is that potential to experience it? Why are there parts on us that are there only to exist for pleasure, for no other reason? There is no functionality of it except to have pleasure. Why is it that we have the opportunity to circulate our energy and experience in a way that we can connect to the divine and have our own channel, our own connection to it, rather than through um, religion? You know, why do those things exist? And how is it not closer to the divine than running around? And do you think that if people are living in a space of bliss and joy, do you think that they're gonna take care of things better? You know, when they have an appreciation for the love and the beauty of one, of one another, of their connection to, their, to themselves um, with the earth, wouldn't they make better choices from that state? Yeah. You know, so it's, you know, so much of what I've been learning uh, has been about how can I make joy the center of my experience and doing things from a place of joy because who wants to play with people that are joyful? And who wants to play with people that are like, mm, 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 you know, that, that are just, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, it, and all of us good, everything's perfect. There's, you know, and that's a weird thing to say. Let me rephrase. Everything is exactly as it is. Everything. We're on the Tao right is now. Is exactly as it is. And we, we haven't lost it and we need to find it. It's exactly the it's way it's It's exactly to be. as it is. And this is something that like, I really, I actually channeled it for a, a client. And it was a huge, huge, that shift in my paradigm so much. Because I started saying, everything is perfect as it should be. And I was like, nope, nope, nope. Because if you say something is perfect, then you become attached to the perfection. Mm. And then everything else is deemed imperfect. But for you in this moment, it's perfect. Five months from now, that might not mm -hmm, be perfect, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and then everything is as it should be. Well, if I'm telling you, well, you know what? Everything is as it should be, Alan. So right now, you know, da, da, da. So then you're having a conflict and you're feeling bad that I should be grateful when I'm not feeling grateful. I should be, so now I'm feeling bad that I'm not feeling grateful and that, it, you know, it does this thing. Um, or everything is as it's meant to be. That really throws people on their head. But to say, like, everything is exactly as it is. Like, to, like when, I, when I feel into the energy of it, because that's something so huge too, is the energetics and everything that we say and what we express in, in this world. Um, everything is exactly as it is. Like, there's just, there's like this solid, solidness to it. And to move each moment being like, everything is exactly as it is. Everything is exactly as it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, yeah. it's a good, just a different way of operating. 
Yeah. Not being attached to good, bad, right or wrong, perfect, imperfect, because everything is exactly as it is. Everything is exactly as it is, and we also have a North Star that we're pursuing and that, yep. yeah, that type of thing. Jessica, thank you again for coming on. <laughs> awesome. Really yeah, thank it. you so much. Thank you. Embody. That's the difference. Yeah. You embodied a state of consciousness. Yeah. You literally felt Rather it. than the intellectualizing Rather than of in it. your mind. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Huge gratitude for you. Yeah. Thank Big you. love. Yeah. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Also, do share more content like this around the world with your friends, families, coworkers, people online on social media. Get talking more about the hero's journey, about mysticism, about channeling, about BDSM. Let's eradicate the taboo from these subjects and move our civilization forward. Huge shout out to Ron Vogus for producing and directing. Yay. Thank you very much, Ron. And also, do check out the links in the bio to not only Jessica, but also to Simulation, our Patreon, our cryptocurrency links down there, our PayPal link is down there. Get supporting the artists, the entrepreneurs, the people around the world that you believe in. Also, design cool merch like this shirt. What's the most beautiful thing in the world? Get paid for designing that merch. And also, spread thought-provoking questions. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. Build the future. Manifest those dreams into the world. We love you. Peace.